Hello and welcome to our panel discussion. I'm Yondan Latu at the South China Morning Post. We're going to be talking about the trade war today, the mm. Sino-US trade war. I have with me at the panel uh, Edward Yao, Good morning. Secretary for Good Commerce morning. and Economic yeah. Development. I have Aaron Harolila, Open General Chamber of Commerce, and Tara Joseph from AmCham, the American Chamber of Commerce. Hello. Welcome. Um, Edward, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. You're just back from Washington. Uh, you've been meeting your U.S. Ca counterparts mm -hmm. in terms of trade and commerce. You've even met the, uh, met the big guns over there. Um, little old Hong Kong, mm -hmm. trapped in the middle of this big trade war between China and the U.S. How much have we got to worry about? What's the mood like on the American side? Uh, you've been actually talking to the business leaders. Mm -hmm. Give us an idea. What's, what was your takeaway from Washington? We went to Washington, D.C. at the worst time, but also the right time. It's the worst time between China-U.S. trade relations. We, we went in the day when both nations imposed a very stiff sort of a sanction list on each other. We went in the day uh, when uh, China sort of a, uh, and U.S. called off their negotiation. So as uh, I think in recent years, we haven't seen such a tense relationship between the two biggest nations and also the two biggest trading entities in the world. But it's the right time for Hong Kong because, well, the Hong Kong message very often got forgotten, ignored, and sometimes brushed aside. So it's nothing better than we as a group, including American business interests in Hong Kong, local major chambers, joining the government, knocking on door, telling that, well, little Hong Kong, as you said, has a role to serve. I agree with you there, but when you say little old Hong Kong, mm -hmm. Hong Kong actually packs a very big economic punch. And for American businesses here and operating in the region, it's a very important place. So mm -hmm. I agree it's a difficult time, but it's a very important time mm -hmm. for uh, business, for politicians mm -hmm. to be in Washington, reminding what Hong Kong has, mm -hmm. one country, two systems, why this is a very important place mm -hmm. to operate. What's the reaction on the business level? What, what kind of reassurances do you have? I'm again referring to your Washington trip, all three of you. Um, what sort of reassurances, what's, what kind of uh, comfort did you, did you get from this in terms of what the business leaders there are doing, uh, regardless mm -hmm. of what the signals are from the White House? I think there will never be any comfort if there is a war that's being waged. And Hong Kong is very vulnerable that, well, we can easily be sort of uh, getting all the collateral damage. But having said that, I think the Hong Kong message caught a little, uh, uh, some surprise by the people whom we have made, both in the administration, Congress, and also uh, the business sector. A, that I think not many Americans noticed that actually Hong Kong being a free trader, we are actually the biggest trade surplus that U.S. earn around the world. For not nothing. Not trade for nothing. relationship. Yeah, for nothing, Absolutely. but because of our openness, point number one. Secondly, I think uh, if we are not sort of a, uh, be more forthcoming ex in explaining the one country, two system, the separate trading entity, Hong Kong could easily be mistaken as being part of China in that sense. Hong Kong has a different trading status. Uh, the second point that we try to hammer home is we have, a fair, we have been a very strong voice as a WTO member. Mm. And we believe tariff doesn't resolve trade dispute. Trade disputes should better be uh, handled bilaterally or multilaterally through certain mechanism, and WTO is the forum. And we, Hong Kong, that's in fact our biggest defense. Well, those are messages that is important to, as a reminder or as a timely sort of a, a, a warning. Well, the, the whole world will be collapsing if everybody sort of fight on their own. We're talking about mm -hmm. China is our Hong Kong's yep. uh, largest trading partner. China is being hit very severely right now, and this trade war is getting pretty nasty. Let's face mm -hmm. it. And it's just not trade now. We're talking about politics as well. We're talking about all this posturing in the South China Sea. It's getting very serious. And, and trade is just one of them, even though right now it's uh, primary. So is there any business is, is the question, as opposed to you helping business owners with loans? What, th what are they borrowing the money for when there's no business to do? What, what is the situation right now? How hard are we being hit? If you look at the figures, even since the starting of the so-called trade war, things, well, all the indicators are still moving north. Trade figures still on the positive, partly because well they're rushing the orders uh, before the, the tariff kicks in. We have been enjoying a very robust, uh, positive uh, economic growth in last year, early this year. But certainly, I think with the full implementation of the tariff, it's going to hit hard. I think the message we brought to DC is: look at the simple arithmetic. Twenty-five percent tariff would not help to yes. bring trade balance. Because, well, that 25% would not be swallowed by only by one party. 
look at the well the production mm. line today. How many producers can claim over double digit profit margin? Nor the trader. So eventually, who is going to bear the cost? And if at the consumer end they bear the cost, and knowing China and US are the biggest trading partner, they are the drive e engine of trade and global economy. If they slow down. Hong Kong would also get get hit. So Aaron, so you're the head of the largest business group in Hong Kong, right? So, uh, you know, following up from what you just said, gi give us an idea of right now, yes. businesses in Hong Kong and all your members, how are they doing vis-a-vis the trade? So, so they're doing uh, fine, actually. What, what they're very concerned about is the uncertainty. I mean, at the moment... Right now, they're not suffering? Uh, right now, they're not suffering because they're front-ending a lot of their orders, mm -hmm. but they're actually not investing at the, at the moment, and that's quite difficult. Uh, the problem with, with tariffs is twofold. It's a blunt instrument uh, to address other problems. And secondly, uh, there's just no certainty on them. Um, if, it were to, if the tariffs were to increase from 10% to 25%, people would start to cut their costs. Uh, interest rates, uh, we're living in an interest, uh, mm -hmm. in an interest rate rising environment. Um, maybe they'd start to look at layoffs. Certainly their margins are going to mm -hmm. decrease. Now that's going to affect the end consumer because they're just going to pass on their costs to the end consumer. So take, for example, the, the exports into America. The American consumer is going, to, is going to suffer. Has anyone, any of your members, have any of them indicated to you yet that they may have to fold at this rate or no, the not a, lay not off people, stage. anything of that sort? I mean, the 10% at the moment, they're not looking at laying off. They said, okay, we could, down the logistic chain, you can actually absorb the 10%. Uh, there'll be percentages absorbed all the way down. 25% uh, is very So that's difficult. the big test, when the 25 kicks in? Correct. Certainly. Correct. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, on a personal point of view, you know, the man on the street, like mm -hmm. me, What's going to be the impact on us? I, I remember uh, some months back we had uh, cheaper cherries, uh, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I kind of appreciated, even though <laughs> I, I, I accept that uh, the fruit uh, retailers and importers, they, they wouldn't have been happy about it. But we had cheaper cherries. Uh -huh. Is there going to be anything yeah. else we can look forward to, the man on the street? Well, goods could become more expensive, so it might start to impact the consumer here if those tariffs are passed on into consumer goods. Um, and the economy could take a mm -hmm. hit here uh, if the trade war continues to, to get worse, which many people are suggesting, uh, we will see more volatility in the markets. The financial markets are very important for Hong Kong. So uh, it could extend throughout the economy and could affect everyone who has a stock, a bond, a, an apartment, etc. So enjoy the cheaper cherries while you're <laughs> Exactly. Because <laughs> you might end up paying double. Um, Edward, and uh, uh, the two of you as well, if you can give me an idea, we, we keep referring to this 25% uh, tariff that's going to kick in uh, next year. What are we facing in Hong Kong? How bad is it going to be? You must have, you must have yeah. some kind of doomsday scenario yeah. or whatever sorted out, right? I Plan. think that that's, that's the million dollar question. First of all, you're, you're not ordinary citizen because you, you're in the know. Yeah. It's important for Hong Kong people, well, big company, chambers, government, or average men in the street. But Hong Kong is very vulnerable. Any major sort of world issue are going to affect Hong Kong. And trade, well, we live on trade. Our trade value is three times of our GDP. And 22% of our, our people sort of work in this sector. So it's, it's nothing small. So it's most important to let people know that, well, with this trade war lingering on, it's going to hit us longer time likely to spill over the other area. But having said that, well, we should get ourselves prepared. Some of the measures are just like life jackets at a time of sort of rough sea. If the two big nations are going to enter into a hack on sort of a uh, 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 problem, I don't think the world economy would be, would be spared. Look at China. While they constitute 15% mm. of the global GDP, they are 30% of the annual growth for the global economy. If that slow down, it won't be one country, and Hong Kong will be hard hit. But well, we we have to also to get prepared yeah. in the in the big, bigger sense of thing, and that's why uh, information, intelligence, uh, and also sort of the mental preparedness for the worst situation to come is vital, and this is not government alone. So, so the SMEs are the ones who have the smallest financial buffer, and they're ninety eight percent of our economy. Uh, they're going to get most hit as long as they have information. Uh, as much information as can be disseminated and they can actually gear down, put their, their sand barriers out, uh, is what they have to do actually for, for the next, for the time being coming.
I think it's also important companies may be looking at moving their supply chains around, and that's not a quick fix, but, but a way to change their supply chains through other parts of the world. Um, but also, Hong Kong's connectivity to Southeast mm -hmm. Asia, to other parts of the world, becomes increasingly important for companies. Many people think of Hong Kong as a gateway in and out of China. Yes, mm -hmm. it is, but it's also a connection point to businesses uh, in Southeast Asia, which are growing mm -hmm. rapidly. Um, to other parts of the world, the Middle East, etc. And I think for businesses, there needs to be some plans around that as well. Yes. So you mean not relying on partnerships with American businesses? We should build uh, mm -hmm. our connections with Southeast Asian uh, economies. Even. I think we've always had connections with, it, with all uh, different economies, all different countries. I don't think it's a qu question of nationality. Isn't that becoming a, a bit more difficult with this whole uh, USMCA uh, agreement as well? So I'm, I'm not sure. Actually, when uh, a trip to, to Washington, the one big message that we heard we're from both sides, the Republicans and the Democrats, or all the people that we met, is they understand that this is not the best tool. The tariffs is just a blunt tool. It's just a horrible weapon to address other issues. Uh, but they both said, okay, that the only way actually to reassert uh, the dominance, economic in other words, of, of the U.S., and to, to, to rebalance the, the, the shift of power is this is the only tool that they have. Um. So Tara, what, what's what, it like what's for difficult? the American businesses? I well, mean what's difficult yeah. about that blunt tool? And I think at this point, people have kind of adjusted to the reality of tariffs. There will be a blunt tool. Is the long-term strategy mm -hmm. that the administration is planning. It's very hard to uh, plan as a business, to think long-term. Uh, if you don't know what the end game or the, the new game of trade is going to be. Many of our companies agree that there should be a level playing field, that there should be more reciprocity, that Chinese markets mm -hmm. should be more open. The question is, what is the long game? Because people mm -hmm. need to plan for that. Well, long game is uh, right now, the, the, at the rate the trade war is going, we're talking about 10 years, by some estimates 20 years. I mean, that's a long time. And that's a lot of hits to take. Yeah. I think we, we have done a few things well before the trade war. Last year, we cut a uh, uh, proposal since this April. We cut profit tax by half for, for, for SMEs, making us the lowest sort of a tax region in the world. We also sort of inject money uh, for SME to go out to the global market on the matching dollar for dollar matching, and also in particular, as Tara mentioned, ASEAN as a group, because we have entered free trade agreement with them. Now, all these are sort of good preparation for the rainy day. Fortunately, we have that done. Now, in, in, the f in facing the trade war now, they need uh, perhaps a, a more stronger sort of life jacket, and that's why the export insurance for SME and also the uh, financing scheme, helping banks not to tighten their, their loans so, so that, well, maintain the liquidity. These are immediately needed, uh, particularly when they are seeing the 25% tariff kicking in. Now, but more importantly is how we position Hong Kong. Hong Kong never positioned ourselves to a single market. And looking back the last 20 years, US, uh, if we talk about trading block, US has come down from number two 20 years ago to number four, superseded by ASEAN and EU as a group. Now this is not by our own deliberation. It is as a result of who would like to trade mm. with Hong Kong and through Hong Kong. But we, we, we like American as much as all other trading partners. The reason why Hong Kong maintained as the global seventh largest trading entity in goods is by our belief and practice of free trade. And that's common to all. That is a common platform for all. And there's no reason why American, Chinese, or others should not seize this opportunity, even at a time of difficulties. Yeah, the but country. there is the president in charge who is very much in charge and who is very much calling the shots, who has upended free trade. He's, he's not into free trade. He's made it very clear. So we can wish for free trade all we want, but, but the I White House doesn't want it. Well, of course, that's for the American to say. But <laughs> in, a, in a global community like today, well, look at this forum. We have businessmen from, from Hong Kong, from U.S., from government. I think this common belief is not dictated by a government. It is the consensus by people who practice trade, not just in Hong Kong, but in the, in the global economy. So are you saying that on the, on the one hand, the US government, the Trump administration, is you know the America first policy, uh, free trade, everything, they're willing to upend it. So you're saying, but on the business practical level, business leaders appreciate 
the importance of free trade and they're going to keep it going and they're working around it? Is, uh, is of that? course business leaders um, value free trade. And um, one could say that p potentially the administration in the United States wants to level the playing field that the trade relationship mm -hmm. is not even. It's not necessarily saying it wants to close you, trade. You agree with that, do you? That, that it's not even right now. You need some kind of adjustment. Well, I think in, in any trading relationship, there is an imbalance. Ju that's just the nature of trade. An imbalance that justifies an all-out trade war? Uh, so there's the incumbent administration in, in uh, the White House at the moment that has a policy. But uh, as you know, administrations come in and out, but, but businesses- Six, six more years. Uh, po very possibly, uh, very possibly. Um, uh, but trade and business actually outruns politics to a great degree. So I will just wrap up by, I'm going to ask you all to reach uh, into your <coughs> mysterious bags for your crystal balls and, and predict, do some kind of prediction. I'm, I'm talking about what are we looking at, say, in the short term, which is, say, about a year, the year ahead right now, and then a longer term, say, maybe in the next five to six years. What, what are we looking at Hong Kong-wise with the trade war that's going on right now? This is likely to pay long. And also, that's why we need to prepare for the worst. Then perhaps it may get worse be before it gets better. Uh, but I don't think uh, the business world will just give up. I think the business world, the international community in Hong Kong, together with government, will still be sort of a, uh, singing this very important song that, well, here in Hong Kong, we see, we see uh, a barrier-free global trade remain the drive engine for the for the world and if that's the case we should we should not be the single voice we should continue to to spread that message to knock, knock on people's door and use Hong Kong to demonstrate this. Okay. I've been surveying our membership regularly and uh, two things really stand out to me in terms of looking towards the future the first is people do think the next six months to a year are going to be tough and get tougher. We, we are expecting turbulent times ahead. However, our membership is also saying they're not pulling their investments out. And also their investments in China, they're not pulling their investments away. So that to me shows that in the long term and beyond the turbulence, there really is a sense, A, Asia is important, B, Hong Kong is an important place to do business. It's not time to abandon ship. I think it's a difficult environment. Uh, uh, exports will decrease by 50% from 6%. Uh, the, the, the forecast is next year should grow by 6%. Uh, that will probably be slashed to about 3%. Uh, it's an uh, interest uh, rising environment. Banks are tightening their credit. Actually, we're very uh, thankful to the government, actually, for, for giving uh, the insurance for helping SMEs uh, with their financing stability. What we need in this day and age is a little bit of stability and a lot of information. I guess I'm the only pessimist on this panel, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope what, you, what all of you say does come true. And that's all we have time for. Thanks very much for joining us, and thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.